Hello, this is the third video in a series I'm calling Generalized Linear Models. Today we'll look at the likelihood, the score function, and Fisher information. Uh, three background videos. The first two in this series called Background and Canonical Link Function. And then one uh, I have, it's called the MLE and Asymptotic Normality. Now in the previous videos, we looked at the density of our our, densi our density of y and it had to fit into this uh, over dispersed exponential family the dispersion parameters positive the weight is positive and we're going to model the canonical parameter as a linear combination of betas now this is for a individual so we need the joint density or you know really ultimately we want to think of as a likelihood but the joint density is for all the y's, so this is a vector of y1 through yn. So it's the pro and since the, the individuals are, or observations are independent, it's just the product of the individual densities. And this is the individual density, and then when you take the product, you sum the exponents and you get this. Now the log likelihood is we take the log of this, and really likelihood means that we think about these parameters as changing and condition on the data. So the role of these and, and, and Y change. And so the log likelihood, which we'll just call L, and then when you take the log of an exponential, you just get what's in the ex exponent. So we just carry that down to here. Um, again, the canonical parameters are the linear combination of the, X, uh, the betas. The score function, or the score equations, is where we, we're going to take the derivative of this with respect to the betas. But uh, a big note here is we assume that we're, that we're modeling the canonical parameter with this linear combination. And as noted in previous videos, this implies that the log partition and the link function are related. And specifically, the first derivative of the log partition and the link function are inverse functions of each other. Um, we will handle the case that the log partition and g are unrelated in another video, for example, probit regression. Uh, score equations, so another note here before we jump into the score equations is the mean of our you know, y, which we'll denote by mu i, is the first derivative of the log partition. And then to, to uh, solve for theta, then we took the inverse of the, this B prime, and we called that G. So G of mu is equal to theta. And G is the link function, and specifically it's the canonical link function because we get the canonical parameter back. The variance, as discussed in previous videos, was the second derivative of the log partition times phi over w and in in general they call would call this v of mu i so it's a function of the mean and they called the variance function and i'm not 100 percent why they called the variance function because the variance of y is actually a constant times v which is a function of mu i but how do we know it's a function of mu i well here, uh, theta i is a function of the mean, right? So if we stick in this here, it's a function of the function of the means, which is a function of the mean. And so that's how we do that. And, and when we talk about the more general case, we'll have to develop a more robust notation and we'll have to use this approach. But for this video, we don't need it. And so we're going to keep the variance as this. Now, um, to take the derivative of this log likelihood with respect to beta, right, but it's in terms of theta, so we'll have to take the derivative of L with respect to theta, and then times it times the derivative of, uh, of theta with respect to betas. So it's, we'll have to use the chain rule to do this. So let's just do it in piecemeal. The, the partial derivative of L with respect to theta I is this. So here, you know, we just get the constant out front, which is this. 
and we get the constant times this. So it's the first derivative of this and then times the derivative of theta, which is one. So we get this. Now, the derivative of theta i with respect to beta, say j, so if we're in this setting, the, and then we do this product, and then the derivative with respect to beta j is just the x in front of it, which is actually x i j. Now we take the, the, the product of these, which is the partial of L with respect to beta j, is, is actually this product. And um, here the x j, which you know maybe if, if you think of it out here, I went ahead and multiplied it in. Now, there's two pieces here, so let's let's multiply the uh, phi in and take the sum of both, and we get this right here. Now, in the general videos, we they call this uh, mu i, which is you know, and, and it is the first derivative of the log partition is the mean, and so we would call it this. We set it equal to zero. And then somehow we solve this for the betas. Okay. I'm going to leave it vague like that because there's multiple ways to solve it and we'll get into that in other videos. Now, you can think of this in matrix form where, you know, this is, remember, for A theta I. And so in matrix form, this would be this. Oh, and, and you know, if we subtract that over, that's why the equal sign here. So the weights are in this matrix here. It's a diagonal matrix of weights. Uh, the xij would be this, um, yi, and so we get this. And so it looks like a system of equations, right? But the mu is actually sort of a function of the beta. So how in the world can we solve this iteratively? And, and to be quite frank, I think the people who invented the uh, iterative reweighted least squares regression and I, I think I know who it is but I'm not going to say it in case I'm wrong the, it's it's so creative so smart it, it's amazing and we'll do that in the next video so the observed Fisher information that's often called J which is a second uh, derivative of L you know so you take all the partials of beta J and, and beta K and then this can be thought of as the partial with respect to beta k of this first derivative, the partial with respect to beta j. Oh, that's k, j. And then we just solve this up, up here, right? So we can plug that in. And now we take the derivative of this with respect to beta k. But there's no betas here, so it drops out. And then we get this. So these are constants, so they're here. And then we take the derivative of this with respect to beta k. So this is the second derivative. And then beta k, when we multiply this out and then take the partial with respect to beta k, we get x i k. And so this is it. Now the Fisher information, and, and actually we probably could have just jumped straight to the Fisher information. But in the general setting, I'm going to take these steps I wanted to do it in this case too but so the Fisher information is actually the expected value of this but there's no y's in here right to take the expected value so it's a constant so actually the the Fisher information is, is we can just get this back right and this can also be represented in matrix form too as x prime w x and where the matrix oh I probably should have called that D and uh, I, I will for this um, so we it can be represented like this in where D is this diagonal matrix of weights the betas the W's and the Phi and then the X's are what it right are here now in uh, you know and so this and now we're going to solve for the maximum likelihood estimate so assume that you know we put it in a black box and we have the maximum likelihood estimates which we're going to touch upon in later videos so um, we're skipping that step but once we get the maximum likelihood estimators 
then we assume that they are asymptotically normal. So in a video, BV3, I showed that, that this is normal with the mean beta, the beta vector, and the inverse of the Fisher information matrix. But now that we have this, we can create confidence intervals for our estimates. We can do hypothesis testing. And the, the world of possibilities opens up. Well, anyway, that's all I have for today. Um, hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.